Napoleon Bonaparte was one of history's most famous revolutionaries, with some of his efforts still impacting Europe today. He was known as the Corsican Ogre, Man of Blood, and Tiny Tyrant. Napoleon was also fond of battle, fond of wits. He was respected and hated, viewed to be either a tyrant or a liberator. However, I believe one of the more interesting aspects of his life was that of a woman he called Josephine. In 1794, a French political figure and general called Alexandra was beheaded during the Reign of Terror, leaving his wife, Josephine, with most of his possessions. She became wealthy, hosted lavish parties, and she was a kind and generous person. It would be fair to say she rose to the top of French society and she developed a reputation for sleeping with a lot of men. She did so not by following her heart, but by using her mind. She would use the status of rich, powerful men to attain their wealth and satisfy herself with expensive leisures. It wasn't a surprise that she discovered the young Napoleon, a young army officer who was quickly gaining notoriety, someone she saw great potential in. They would meet in secret and attend balls only for the purpose of dancing with one another. Soon after, Napoleon would propose, against his family's wishes, he was a man obsessed. Two days after their wedding in 1796, Napoleon would leave for Italy and lead their army. While he was gone, Josephine took an interest in gardens and botany. She wanted to collect every known rose. Napoleon ordered warships to search all seized vessels for plants to send to Josephine, putting some of his men in danger while crossing these active war zones. He would send black swans, peacocks, llamas, and kangaroos, but Josephine's favorite animal was an orangutan she called Rose, which was her real name. Napoleon's passion would continue in a very aggressive way, sending letters to her almost every day while he was at war. I thought that I loved you months ago, but since my separation from you, I felt that I love you a thousandfold more. I entreat you to permit me to see some of your faults, be less beautiful, less gracious, less affectionate, less good especially be not over anxious and never weep. For whatever reason, Josephine almost never replied, and when she did, it was dry and cold. The relationship was very one-sided. As Napoleon would continue his campaigns, Josephine would have an affair with a lieutenant, Hippolyte Charles, sending him letters when she could. Tell me that you love me, that you love only me. You alone have my tenderness, my love. Rumors spread to Napoleon, and he was enraged, contemplating divorce, but with time, they reconciled, and Napoleon's love changed, his letters lost their passion. He would sleep with many women afterwards, and while in Egypt, he slept with the wife of a junior officer, who everyone called Napoleon's Cleopatra. In his letters to Josephine from Egypt, he would say, Power is my mistress. As Napoleon led France to victory during several campaigns in Europe, he used his status to start his political career. In 1799, he planned a coup and became the first consul of the Republic, taking control of the French government. Feeling guilty for her affair, Josephine would use her social status to advance Napoleon's career, and in 1804, Napoleon was elected Emperor of France. Most of the paintings we have of Napoleon today were commissioned by Josephine as she saw them as part of his propaganda, an unstoppable force of power. Even with Josephine's newfound devotion, Napoleon would still continue his affairs, getting caught sleeping with one of Josephine's assistants. In this moment, Napoleon threatened divorce, revealing his anger would come from Josephine's inability to produce an heir, a son for Napoleon. After several attempts to improve her fertility, Napoleon would remain disappointed and divorce her for what he would say, the interests of France. During their divorce ceremony, they both publicly announced their devotion for one another, with Josephine announcing, the only thing that ever came between us was my debts, certainly not his manhood. Napoleon went on to marry Mary Louise four months later. She was the daughter of the former Holy Roman Emperor Francis II, whose empire Napoleon had already destroyed. She would love Napoleon, but he didn't care for her, even stating, it is a womb that I am marrying. It was said that throughout this marriage, Josephine and Napoleon would still meet each other and continue to sleep together. And during Josephine's last years, Napoleon would still pay for her garden and parties. 
He continued his conquests of Europe, but was defeated in Russia, unprepared for the cold weather and attacked from the coalition army, which was comprised of many of the nations he attacked. He gave up his throne after they invaded France, and he was exiled to the island of Elba in 1814. It was here that he learned of Josephine's death, locking himself in a room for two days. And a year later, he would escape from Elba and take back control of France. He was again defeated by another coalition and exiled once more to St. Helena. He lived the rest of his life in exile, with his last words, France, the army, the head of the army, Josephine.